block. So in this block, um, Paul and Liu Peng is going to talk about a data portal um, as part of the seminar series, The Metabolism of Cities or Building. And uh, I think you all know Paul. Someone else is presenting while I open it. No, we have a problem. Here we go. So, I'll be presenting a system that we've set up recently at Contemplus of Cities called Multiplicity. And before we go there, I'd like to explain to you what Metabolism of Cities is. Um, I spoke with Don Lee earlier, and he described his group as a hub club. And I think that very well describes uh, how we started, at least. So, our initiative started as a, as a hobby club, as a group of people coming together, um, mostly um, young academics, people doing <coughs> research on urban metabolism who had an interest in doing something more than, than their research. And our goal really was to, um, we believe in this concept of urban metabolism having lots of potential and being useful um, currently very much in the academic sphere, but having lots of potential elsewhere as well. And we would like to spread the word. It's not a very well-known discipline, and we felt the need to collaborate, also because we were located in many different places, and we figured, let's do that through a website in which we publish, um, for instance, information about publications that are out there. We put in a nice index, um, we talk about what research is being undertaken, and we try and help people understand what's happening in this field. So we really worked on creating a hub on urban metabolism um, with very much the, the philosophy of open source sharing of information behind it. Slowly but steadily, we, we expanded our group. We are now nine people. Um, we have also expanded the background of people in our group. So the, the person at the bottom center, Ramiro, he is a 53-year-old dentist in Argentina who has a very keen interest in urban metabolism. And he, through a MOOC, he has found out about this concept and we warmly welcomed him to our group. Um, so what we do these days is not restricted to just running um, some publication index on our website, but we really try to, to work together and develop different projects that could range from um, We've seen earlier these, these material exchange platforms, so we're doing something with the, the government in Brussels to, to, to work on that, to writing up um, research reports together with local governments, to organizing uh, series, seminar series like this. So we try to really bring this to a more practical level. Um, and in our approach, <coughs> we try to become a little bit more professional from our hobby club into a more professional setting. Uh, we defined what our goal is, which is something we hadn't cleared from the beginning. So we defined this as we would like to collaborate on systematically improving the sustainability, of s the sustainability of cities. That, more than anything else, is what we try to do. Now, we try to do that by creating and sharing urban metabolism knowledge and accelerating its implementation in policy and practice. We have debated as well whether or not we want to define our goal around urban metabolism. We said. Primarily, we want to collaborate and, and help improve sustainability of cities. We think that can be done through urban metabolism, but if we prove it wrong, we change the methodology. And we really want to go to as much depth as we can to find out if urban metabolism can help with that. Now, how do we do that? We work on creating knowledge, sharing knowledge, applying knowledge, and fostering a community. And we have different ways in which we do that. Now, Looking at different research projects and what they find if they look at applying uh, policies and interventions to or developing strategies for sustainable resource management, you'll see a pyramid being defined by, by this Min Future project that highlights different pieces that you need to reach strategy and decision support. <coughs> Where we work in, 
You can see here what the different components are. We work very much in the middle of this pyramid. We leave it to others to work on strategy and decision support. We leave it to others to develop the systems that you need. But we want to work with the data that comes out of those systems. We want to work creating models and scenarios, understand uncertainty, develop visualization, and develop indicators. So all these things, we see our role as facilitators of that process, or facilitators of providing, developing visualization, providing information on, on indicators. In the end, it's cities and it's city government that needs these different tools to affect change. And that's what we believe. And we think that our academic principle can help city government achieve those goals. Now, what are some challenges that we have seen in our work? When it comes to urban metabolism data, which was the lower part of the pyramid, there are already a number of challenges we experience every day. It's incredibly time consuming to find data. It's often very difficult to access. You talk about some PDF report that sits on a website. You can often find data on computers in a lab or at city level that you somehow need to get out of there. Um, it's very scattered, so there's no one central place to go to. And formats are very inconsistent. So those are some problems that we find at that lowest level. Now, we cannot really get to the higher level if we don't solve those problems. So this multiplicity project tries to work on these challenges. So this project that we talk about is very much an online tool that tries to address this issue that we saw earlier. So we try to make available data in a user-friendly, centralized platform. So when you talk about data being, being inaccessible and scattered, <coughs> we feel that some of the solutions could be around creating one single place in which you can find all this information. A lot of cities deal with the same challenges around managing this information, and a lot of researchers deal with the problem of finding it. We are a global group, and we feel that if we can find a solution that suits one city, then we can possibly replicate this in other cities. And of course, we have to adjust to local circumstances, but the good thing is we are a global community, and we can work with people in different cities to find out how do we need to adjust it to the local situation, always working off one single standardized platform. Now, we embrace philosophies around open source and open access, so the idea is very much to make this available to all. Um, and we come from this academic background. So we feel that some of these projects that city practitioners work around may not have the academic rigor that we'd like to see. And we'd like to bring that to planners and to policy makers. At the same time, academics or um, planners, we can't do it all ourselves. But in society, there are many people who like to contribute to this idea of sustainable cities. So our goal is to bring the energy of those people, of everyday people, who no, may not have a degree in sustainability, who may not work as city planner, but we like to rope them in, and rope in their energy to help with this kind of project. And finally, as I said, we'd like this to be replicable. To replicable. We develop it for one city and we make it available to others. So, um, <coughs> our platform very much revolves around the idea of presenting all different sectors that relate to material resource use, consumption, um, flows, stocks. We present those sectors and bit by bit we present the sectors in a standardized format that is incredibly accessible. And I'll show it just now. But we break information up in a number of different pieces, which can then also be accessed through their own section. So first of all, we want to provide general information about the sector. People often know only a particular element of a sector. So if you talk about water, if I'm a resident, I know about water being available or not in my house. That's where it ends. I don't know where it comes from, I don't know where it goes. Similarly to waste. I create waste, I put the bed out, and that's it. Even if I'm an, a professional, I may only deal with one part of the sector. So our goal in this first part of describing a sector is to describe the overall sector in small pieces of text in a way that's very accessible to anybody. I can spend half an hour reading through this and I have a, a nice holistic understanding of what happens in this sector in this city. Next, we present a number of data sets. So we try to explain to people, to show people what's available, what data is out there. For all of this, we don't imagine that it's going to com be complete and comprehensive and perfect 
from the beginning. But we feel like all of this, any information that's out there that we can share, any data that's out there with, that we can share, is more, is better than nothing. So there is a lot of data sitting in different pieces, and we'd like to show those different pieces here in one place, not as a PDF that you download, not as an Excel spreadsheet, but it's on the web, so as a nicely browsable, viewable, filterable um, section. Then you'll see a part of the infrastructure. So when we talk about material stocks and flows, there's often infrastructure related to that. And we'd like to index that. And now we talk about maps, we want to know where things are. If you talk about flows, you need to understand how do they flow through a city. So this is very much geographic information um, to better understand and to better imagine. So if people hear that their waste goes to landfill or an incinerator, the picture says much more than, than words. So we want people to browse a map, to check their neighborhood. What's near me? What's impacting my or our city's uh, stocks and flows? And how can I see that? And we want to bring that closer to people and every stakeholder involved. Finally, documents, academic publications, reports from government, legislation, we try to put it in one place, uh, and then multimedia, photos, videos, etc. This gives you a, a top level idea. But of course, I'd like to show you what we have. Um, now let me have a look. First of all, we're going to look at Cape Town. So in Cape Town, we've started populating the system with some information. It's not complete yet, still a lot to do, but it gives you an idea of what we're, what we're looking for. So um, you'll see the dashboard. So this is the, the, the section. On our website, it's not called multiplicity. It's called simply cities. And under cities, you see, uh, you see a number of cities that pop up there um, for which we have started developing dashboards. Now. You can see here we define a number of sectors that are all related to resource flows and stocks. Uh, there could be different ones in different cities. And here you see the same overview. Now I'm going to browse it by going to the waste sector, which is of course what what's the what interest today. Good thing that I opened it already in another tab. <laughs> so first of all, here you see a general description of these different parts of the waste sector in Cape Town. If you come from Beijing, you come from um, Chicago, you come from India, you have no clue what's happening in Cape Town, but we want to share this information. You go here and you browse. So what happens in terms of waste generation in Cape Town? Here you get a couple paragraphs that explain what waste is being generated and how it works in, in our city. Same for waste collection, how is that done? What waste management facilities are there? So in very little time, I can get the top level understanding of what happens in the city. Now, as we go down, we'll see the, the data sets that are available around waste. And as I said, this we try to make it as accessible and easy to browse as possible. So here you see a data set on hazardous waste entering disposal facilities. And at the same time, I have a number of other data sets underneath, which if I were to have internet, I could show you. For all of the data sets, you can open them. And here comes the academic reader. We try to really detail to people where does this data come from? What is the, the uncertainty of this data? Can you rely on this or not? Um, who's provided it? And how can you replicate getting this data set? We link data to infrastructure. So as we go down, our next section is around what infrastructure exists for waste in Cape Town. And here you see we have three landfill sites, three waste transfer stations, and 37 drop-off sites. There is more. We just started with this. But this gives you an idea. And here you can see on a map, you can browse the different facilities that are there. Um, people can click it, open profiles, and browse them. Again, I'm not going to do it now. Um, to really get this idea of exactly what's out there and how is this related. It's set up in a way in which we link all these bits and pieces. So if I upload a data set that contains information on all the waste entering, all the landfill sites, I have to link, list one by one for each of the landfill sites what happens. I can check the full volumes for all landfill sites. <coughs> And then here you can see our three landfill sites. I can open the profile of one landfill site and it will pull the data for that particular landfill site. So there's many different angles to browse the same information so that people who are interested in a particular angle can find that. Um, and finally, we can see the documents that are related to, to these different pieces and a number of photos and videos. Now, if you look here, this is a profile of a landfill site. And here you can see the, some photos, some maps, and this is a similar data set, but now just filtered for this particular landfill site. You can download all the data, see where it comes from, 
um, and there's a lot of who uploaded this, when was it amended, etc. Um, the process of putting information in there is something that, as I said, we want to make as easy and as crowdsourced as possible. So we've worked on a system in which people can upload information bit by bit. So we don't expect someone to have all pieces in place. So we tell everybody, listen, if you have any information on infrastructure, if you can find data on what landfills are out there, what incinerators are out there, you can put it in. If someone else has photos, they can upload photos. If someone else has data on, on population, uh, geospatial information, everybody can contribute their piece of information. You upload this by following a very simple procedure. You format your data <coughs> as a CSV file, and you upload it into the system. The system then makes all those graphs. It puts it on maps. It links different things. It makes it available for download. So a user really only is concerned with formatting the data in the right format. We've been trialing this in a number of different places. We've worked with uh, Leiden University in Holland uh, to work on the city of The Hague. We've worked with a number of different groups in Cape Town. We've been working with Japan um, here in Beijing. And we're trying out how can we involve a wide variety of people in uploading and contributing data. And something we're finding out in Cape Town is you really don't need to necessarily work exclusively <coughs> with people who work in this field. We've done a number of, of projects with citizens who come together because they like, in this case, it's people who come together around the, the topic of, of open software. And um, it's people, it's, it's web developers, activists, journalists who come together who don't necessarily know anything about sustainability. But we go there and we explain what we do. And they say, well, that's interesting. I'm concerned about this topic. How can I help? And it turns out that you don't necessarily need to know about sustainability to contribute pieces of information to this. So we've had people who know about programming go to OpenStreetMaps and crawl for all the different train stations in Cape Town. They uploaded it in here. We've got someone who, again, knows about journalism and, and um, gathering information, who went to the website of the city of Cape Town and found all the information about the dam levels in the city and populated that information. And it's really great to see how people who we normally don't get data from now contribute information to the system. And there is lots of things to do. We're only scratching the surface and we're only trying to figure, uh, only now starting to figure out how are things different in different cities? And in Cape Town, we have no incineration plants. Yupeng showed us that here there's a number of, of uh, incineration plants, so we have to just add a new type um, of facility to make sure we accommodate for that. It's a very simple example, but we'll come across many of these different issues that we'd like to solve with the community, with the people that we work with. So this is very much a collaborative project that is at its infancy, but we think it provides some potential. So. Our goals with this project are to take urban metabolism to a more practical level. And we want, in the first stage, we just want to populate the system with information. Just have all these little bits and pieces in there. We don't look at the city as a whole. We want to unpack the box and look at, you can see, at landfill level, at, at suburb level, at whatever level data is available. So it's very much caters to this multi-level um, data upload. At the same time, our goal is to say, well, once we have information, we must start doing the things that we as academics do. We must put together a system-wide understanding of what happens in the city. But we don't do that as a starting point. The starting point is to put all these pieces in. Then we can try and understand the different systems, the water cycle and the food cycle and what. But ultimately, our third phase of the project is to develop tools around this. So we'd like to see, and uh, we're engaging with, with um, city officials to say, what do you need to help your decision making? What do you need to help your policy making? And some of the things that we have planned, you can imagine if you have a number of, of different data sets for every city around the same topic. You can do a lot of interesting things with that. And if you take the example of, of waste, let's say we have different waste technologies. So again, you can talk, talk about uh, incineration and about landfill solutions, and you can talk about the, the ways you collect waste there's all these different technologies and there's different types of, of, of methods being used in different cities. Now, if we have lots of data that paints a clear picture of the environmental impact of the current method employed in the city, and at the same time, we have similar data sets <coughs> from other cities that use other technologies. 
city officials can say, well, let me use the system to try and understand what would the, the impact be of swapping out of technologies, of upgrading, of employing different tools. Would that ultimately, if the system allows them to forecast what the environmental impact would be, and again, here we need a city-wide impact, because you can't just talk about waste, we need to see what the total impact is. But if, if our system can help understand the total impact, it becomes much easier for city officials to get a better understanding of the impact of the decision making. Now you can think of many other tools that you can offer to, to city officials and to practitioners that help them make better decisions and that help them understand better what the impact is of different alternatives. And as I said, we're very much at the beginning phase, but our goal really is to provide tools that are, are useful at a practical level. We don't know yet exactly how we'll get there, but we think that the first step is to create this kind of tool and to engage with relevant people. So that's our um, our system 13 in place. And I'd like to ask you, Peng, to continue to talk about the, the, the system. Shall I open the again? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I can. Yeah. Okay, so, so to, to introduce, we have worked with Yupeng, who's based in Xiamen, um, and who's done a lot of MFA work. Um, yeah. We've worked together on working on Beijing, which is for us very far remote, but for Yupeng much closer to home. So I'll leave you.